بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا Human beings by their very nature, the nature of the heart and the soul is that it always gets enticed and excited by something. There is something that the soul or the heart is wondering about or becoming amazed with. So what tends to happen is the soul becomes in awe of a variety of issues or variety of people or a variety of ideas. And this is something which is very dangerous to the soul and the heart. Because as a believer, you want to ensure that you have a strong relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to ensure that your positive energy and your positive thoughts, they pertain to Allah azza wa jal. You want to ensure that your ta'zeem in your heart and your soul is given to none other than your creator, your khaliq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the less ta'zeem you have in your heart of Allah azza wa jal, which means ta'zeem means uh, like looking at something as being great and amazing. The less you have ta'zeem in your heart of Allah, the more you will have ta'zeem of the creation, which is anti-tawheed. And it's bad for your soul. And it's bad for your heart in a variety of reasons, for a variety of reasons. So we need to be in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the reason you may ask? Well, first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in everything about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he deserves to be praised. As humans, as I mentioned, many a time, we come across a character or a person that has praiseworthy characteristics or is living in a praiseworthy way in life or has some attribute about them which amazes you. Now the thing to remember is that whatever anybody has from amongst the creation that is praiseworthy, who gave it to them in the first place? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are amazed by something in the creation, you should remember who gave it to them in the first place. And that will cause you to praise the one who truly deserves to be praised. And you should remember that whatever this person has from characteristics or attributes that are praiseworthy, they're not always going to be with that person. Because a person goes, goes through states in their life. At times they are praiseworthy and at times they are not praiseworthy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always praiseworthy because everything he does Everything about his attributes and his names are beautiful, beautiful, perfect, and praiseworthy. So we have to remember all of the time that the one that we should be in awe in and the one that we should be praising is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azawajal, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of everything that, that exists in the universe. Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum, walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah in the early verses, O mankind, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you, and those that came before you, the millions that came before you, so that you may gain taqwa. الَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءَ وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ ثَمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah is the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who created for you the earth as a flat plain, easy for you to live on, and created for you the sky as a canopy and as a roof, and created for you and sent down for you the rains as provisions for you. And from that rain came about plants and vegetation and fruits that you take as provisions. So if Allah is the one who does all of this for you, takes care of all of your needs, then He is the one that is deserving of praise. He is the one that is deserving of your awe and deserving of your magnification nobody else who takes care of you who takes care of your needs who provides for you without even you thinking about what you require from provisions it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he is the one who then deserves for you to worship and for you to be in awe of him subhanahu wa ta'ala in Bukhari the hadith in Bukhari Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu narrates he said Ja'a habrun min al-ahbar ila rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam one of the scholars from amongst the Christians or the Jewish tribes that lived in Medina, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, Inna najidu anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaj'al as-samawati ala iswa. We find in our books and our traditions that Allah azawajal, He is able and He will put all of the creation from amongst the heavens, the skies, 
on a fingertip. And also that which he's created on the earth upon a fingertip. And he will say on the day of judgment, I am the true king. There is none besides me who owns except for me. So when the Prophet he's heard this, he laughed and he smiled. Out of confirmation of what this rabbi or Christian priest was saying. That it's true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so powerful that he has the ability to gather all of the creation and to put it on one or two of his fingertips. And then the Prophet ﷺ recited the verse in the Quran, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْعَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبَدَتْهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَّاتٌ بِيَدِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ عَمَّا يَشْرِكُونَ The Prophet ﷺ recited the verse wherein Allah says, and they did not give Allah their Creator a just estimation. They, don't, they did not give him the value that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is due in their hearts and in their minds. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, the verse says, that will gather together the earth and the heavens as though they are just rolled up in his hands. Praise be to Allah, the one subhana, subhanallah means that Allah is free of all perfections and high and mighty is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa confirmed what this rabbi or priest said, that in reality, Allah has the ability and he will on the day of judgment roll up all of the creation as though it's nothing and it will be in his hand and he will say and he will remind everyone, even though they are dead, that I am the true king. There is no king besides me in true reality. So when a person reads this, he should be in awe of his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know how powerful and how magnificent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Especially when you are in the position of ruku or in the position of sujood. When you're in your salah and you want to truly enjoy from that act of worship, when you're bowing down to Allah, or when you're prostrating your face on the ground, out of praise to Allah Azawajal, remember these meanings that you read in the Quran and in the hadith. Remember who you're prostrating to. Because when you have these thoughts going through your mind, you will learn to become humble for the sake of Allah Azawajal. You will learn that any problems that you have in life, you know that Allah can take care of them for you. You will learn that everything that Allah has given to you, you should thank him for that. So your heart and your mind and your soul will become more and more in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will enjoy the act of worship more and more by the permission of Allah azawajal. Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu, he narrates in an athar. An athar means that it's a statement of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu So hadith is obviously a statement of the Prophet sallallahu Athar, this word we use to mean, it's a statement of the companion. So Ibn Masoodin radiyallahu anhu, he narrates in the Athar, he said, Bayna samai dunya wallati taliha khamsu mi'ati am. He said, between the lowest heaven, meaning the sky that we see, and the next heaven after it, is a distance of 500 years. A distance of traveling of 500 years. Wa bayna kulli sama khamsu mi'ati am. And then between each level of the heavens, there is a distance of 500 years. وَبَيْنَ الْخُرْسِي وَبَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ سَابِعَةِ وَالْكُرْسِيِّ سَبْعُمِيَةِ عَامٍ And between the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the seventh heaven, خَمْسُمِيَةِ عَامٍ There is another distance of 500 years. وَبَيْنَ الْكُرْسِي وَالْمَا خَمْسُمِيَةِ عَامٍ And between Allah's kursi, I'll come to explain a few moments what the kursi, this word kursi means. Between the kursi of Allah azawajal, and the water, there is another 500 years. And then he said, وَالْعَرْشْ فَوْقَ الْمَا وَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى فَوْقَ الْعَرْشْ وَلَا يَخْفَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ And above this water, which is above all of the creation, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. And Allah is above his throne. And nothing escapes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being so high up above his creation from what his creation is doing. Yani all of this distance that I mentioned, that from each level of the heavens, between the sky that we see above us and the first level of the first, the lowest heavens is a distance of traveling of 500 years. And then you go up until you pass the seven heavens. And then beyond that, another 500 years of distance until you reach the kursi of Allah Azawajal, right? So all of this huge distance, but to Allah Azawajal, He's able to see every single thing that is taking place in His creation. Nothing escapes His sight, nothing escapes His knowledge. So when you know this, you should be in awe of Allah Azawajal. You should understand how magnificent your creator is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Taymin, he mentions as a point of knowledge, he said that this thing, هذا الحديث موقوف على ابن Masood. 
He said that this statement is mawquf. When we use the word mawquf, it means it stopped at Ibn Masood. You know a hadith, statements of the Prophet Sallallahu they all have a chain of narration that you can check which go back to the Prophet Sallallahu You can go to the books of narrations and you can check the validity of this statement. Is it found to be able to be traced back to the Prophet Sallallahu So that's a hadith. It has what is known as a sanad. But this athar is mawquf, meaning it doesn't have a chain which goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu But then why can I quote it as an evidence? Because the Sheikh, he explains, he says, look, it's from those things which are from the matters of the unseen. And we know that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu out of their piety and their good upbringing with the Prophet Sallallahu they would never speak about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala without having first been taught about this from the Prophet Sallallahu That's why we know we can take it as an evidence. Because Allah warns us in the Quran, that do not speak about your creator without knowledge, without revelation. Because this is how many, many people go astray. They start to imagine that God is like this, he's X, Y, and Z. They're not saying their statements based upon revelation, right? So this is something which is prohibited in Islam. Do not describe God from your own minds and your own thoughts because you're going to get it wrong. You're going to be influenced by shaitan and others. You can only describe Allah as is described in the Quran or in the true statements of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Shaykh, he's saying that though this is not a hadith, Ibn Masood is well known to be a scholar from amongst the scholar of the companions and there's no way that we, he would have dared to have spoken about Allah without having this first taught to him by the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, based upon that, you can take it as an authentic statement, as an authentic narration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran, that Allah's kursi expands all of the creations, all of the heavens and the earth. So what is the kursi of Allah? The kursi pertaining to Allah is not his throne, it's the footstool. Okay? And the thing to remember is when we discuss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any of his names and attributes, remember the rule that Allah gave us in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like unto Allah. Yet he hears and he sees. So whenever your mind goes to think about, okay, you're telling me that Allah has a kursi, that means he has feet. Are his feet like my feet? Absolutely not. Allah is telling us there's nothing like unto Allah, yet he hears and he sees. So Allah negates the fact that nothing can be similar to him. At the same time, he established that he does have attributes, like he sees and he hears. So Allah is a living being. But when it comes to your mind, what is he seeing like? What is he hearing like? Obviously, you understand, it's nothing like that of the creation. Is far removed and far more perfect and beyond anything similar to that of the creation, right? So Allah says, Wasi'a kursiyyu samawati wal ard. The Prophet ﷺ narrated in this hadith, he said, Ma as samawatu sab fil kursi illa ka hal illa ka halqatin mulqatil fi ardi falat. He said, The example of Allah's kursi, the place where I said where his feet rest, in comparison to the creation to all of the creation that we see and we know about is nothing except for the similitude of a ring which is thrown into an open desert. So all of the creation that you see and that you know about, compare it to be the ring. And the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the open desert. So look at the difference in the magnitude. Imagine now how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And in the hadith it continued and he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. وَفَضْلُ الْعَرْشِ عَلَى الْكُرْسِي And the expanse of Allah's throne in comparison to his kursi is like again the ring thrown into the desert. So this gives you some understanding as to the magnificence and the magnitude and the enormity of the one that you are worshipping, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why does the Prophet sallallahu and Allah azawajal inform us about himself in this way? Because he wants us, like I said in the beginning, to be in awe of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the more you are in awe of Allah, the less you will care about being in awe and submitting and being subservient to the creation who are weak and in reality pathetic. Don't be in awe of the creation, be in awe of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who created all of the wonderful creation that you see around you. How many angels carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah mentions in the Quran, in Surah al haqa that there will be eight angels that carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one narration, narrated by Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu said, 
أذن لي أن أحدث الملك من من ملائكة الله سبحانه وتعالى من حملة العرش. I was permitted to speak to you and to inform you about one of the angels that carried the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how did the Prophet sallallahu describe him? He said, إِنَّمَا بَيْنَ شَحْمَةِ أُذْنِهِ إِلَىٰ عَاتِقِهِ مَسِيرَةَ سَبْعُمِيَةِ عَامِ He said, verily, between the distance of the air of this angel until the shoulder of this angel is a distance of 700 years travel. That's just one of the angels that carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it's this huge and this enormous of a creation, you can't even begin to fathom who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in terms of his enormity. All you can do is appreciate and humble yourself when thinking about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in his perfect creation. <clears throat> the righteous, those who we meet or come across from time to time, those who we read about in the books that we have in the Islamic history, etc. We find them to be people that they read these things and they benefit from them. They truly internalize these meanings. They truly internalize these teachings. That's why one of them, it was asked to him, why is it that I see you are looking a bit pale and you're making wudu? You know wudu is the purification you have before you go to pray. Why do you think he was looking a bit pale? He said, Atadruna bayna yadayman aqif. He said, do you know who I'm about to stand in front of to pray? So it's not like us, right? The prayer is just mechanical. He's from the time he's making wudu, purification, he's thinking about the magnificence of the one who's going to stand in front of to pray to. So he becomes a bit pale because he realizes who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, the enormity of his creator, the magnificence of his creator. So he has some type of fear from Allah azza wa jal and some type of magnification which takes place in his soul. <clears throat> so the righteous, they're in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's how we have to become. We should be amazed by Allah azza wa jal. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything that exists. There is nothing that moves in the heavens or the earth, not a leaf that falls, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. And knows about it before it takes place. There is not a sound in the universe or all of the universes, except that Allah subhanahu wa is completely aware of that sound. Now imagine an ant walking in a dark night, right? Under a rock. Not only does Allah subhanahu wa see that ant in the darkness of the night, and in the darkness of being under that rock where no one else can see it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the footsteps of that little tiny ant from above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then you should think, how about yours and mine's speech? How about the words that we say? Shouldn't we be a bit more careful and more selective about the things that we say? If Allah can hear everything that's taking place in the universe, we should have some shyness to be careful how do we speak to one another. Because for sure Allah hears clearly everything that we say. Khawla bin Tha'laba radiyallahu anha, she came to the Prophet وسلم, to complain about her husband. And Aisha radiyallahu anha narrates this. Because you know that the house of the Prophet وسلم, is very tiny. So she was in the house of Aisha radiyallahu anha, which is basically a tiny room. So Aisha is in one corner of the room and this Sahabi, Khawla bin Tha'laba, she's complaining to the Prophet وسلم, via whispering. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, I could not hear clearly what she was saying. I caught a bit of it, but I couldn't catch the rest of it. So I couldn't hear. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals from above the seven heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that he heard the conversation of complaint that was taking place between this sahabiya, this companion, female companion, and the Prophet وسلم, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of all things. And Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, when she found out that Allah had revealed that he heard this conversation, she could not help herself but say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah, who is able to hear every sound in existence. And that's the reality of Allah Jal. There's nothing that escapes his knowledge, whether it be sight, whether it be knowledge, whether it be hearing. So we should have awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should ensure that we behave in a manner which reflects that we understand the magnitude of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We should be in awe of Allah Jal because he needs nothing and everything needs him. 
He needs nothing, and everything in creation needs him for their deep. They depend upon him for their existence. Allah is a samad. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. The meaning of samad that you read regularly in Surah Al Ikhlas is that Allah is free of any wants or needs, but everything in creation turns to him for want and need. And Allah explains this in many verses. Ya ayyuhan nas, antum al fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al ghani al hamid. O mankind, you are all in poverty and in need of Allah Azawajal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free and he is rich and complete. He has no needs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know the amazing thing is that think about the trillions of creatures that exist on planet earth today. Who provides for every single one of them? The trillions of creatures Allah provides for every single one of them. And that's just today. Imagine from the beginning of time till now and to the end of time that Allah is going to provide for all of these creatures and it affects him in nothing way shape or form it ties him not to provide for all of these creatures in fact the prophet sallallahu said in bukhari he said yadullahi mal'a la yughiduha nafaqatun saha al-layl wa nahar the prophet sallallahu said that the hand of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is full and spending every night and every day doesn't diminish anything from what he has have you not seen that what Allah has spent since the beginning of time, this didn't decrease in the treasures that Allah has in his hands in any way, shape or form. And when you think about that, this is something which just blows your mind. Truly, Allah takes care of all of the creation. And you know what's even more amazing than that? That he takes care of our needs many a time without us even asking. You know with the creation, if you don't ask, you don't get. It's well known. You do not ask, you do not get. They'll forget about you. But Allah Jalla, how many times, think about it, there's so many things that have been given to you in life, you didn't ask for it. But Allah Jalla, He took care of you. He knows what you need. He provides for you, moment after moment. Not only does He provide for you, He selects for you the best of provisions. You are choosing something. You are chasing after something. You are begging for something, but Allah keeps that away from you. Because he knows it's going to be bad for you. But he chooses for you that which is best for you. Subhanallah. We should be in awe of Allah Azawajal all of the time. Because he's perfect in everything that he does and every choice that he makes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The key point from this few points that I wanted to mention was that we should have awe of Allah Azawajal. And the only way we can really do that is to have a deep pondering and reflection. Afala yatadabbaruna al-Quran, Allah says. Do they not ponder the Quran? Or are there locks upon their hearts? Allah is telling us this statement in a form of rebuke. That our problem is, we read so much about Allah in the Quran and the Sunnah, but we don't stop. Ask yourself, when was the last time that a verse has stopped you in your tracks? That you just had to stop reading and, wow, what did I just read there? That's too amazing. I have to now sit, I have to think about what I read. I have to ponder, I have to internalize, I have to go and search. What did Allah mean by this? Speaking about himself or about his abilities or about his perfection. We have to start to behave in that manner. If we want to have all of Allah in our lives and we want to increase in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time we come across a verse of Allah describing him or his attributes or his names or anything that he does, whether in the Quran or in the, in the Sunnah, allow yourself to stop. Allow yourself to go and research. Allow yourself to ask and find out so you can be more in love of, with Allah and more in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's only by being in touch deeply with the Quran in this manner and with the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, can we increase an iman, in iman in the way that we should. It's a reality. We have to get there, brothers and sisters. We have to start making that journey more and more towards Allah, being in love with Him, being in awe of Him. And then we will see things to change in our life. Because you know, many of us, we have so many issues in life. We have so many shortcomings and sins. Yet we read the Quran. Yet we come to the Islamic classes. But why is it? Why is it not changing? Why are we not improving in our journey towards Allah Azawajal? This is the key reality. One of them. From the main things that we need to do. Apart from leaving off the sins as much as we can, we need to start to understand truly who is Allah. The more we have this magnification of Allah in our minds, we won't want to displease Him. The more we have this magnification of Allah in our hearts and souls, we will never feel depressed. 
We'll never be too worried about the situations that we have because we know that Allah is all powerful and all able. He'll take care of these situations soon, right? So if we can get to that state, our life will change. So we ask Allah to make us from those that when we read the Quran and the Sunnah, that we are able to reflect in a deep manner and we are able to benefit in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to benefit. I mean, I ask Allah that He makes this sitting that we had heavy in our scale of good deeds. And I'd like to remind you that anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shortcomings and mistakes were for myself and shaitan. And you all of you have a role to play. It's good that you're coming to listen to the words of Allah and the words of the Prophet This is something you should be so happy about. But don't stop there. You have to call other people also to what you heard. If you understood something, teach it to someone. Teach it to your best friend. Teach it to your wife. Teach it to your children. And on top of that, Next time you come, if your car is empty, fill it up. Make sure there's seven people in your car, even if you have five seats. <laughs> no, don't do that, it's breaking the law. Make sure your car is full. Make sure you tell people, look, there's a class. I'm not saying this because I want people to listen to me. Inshallah, this is not the case. May Allah protect me from this. It's because we want people to listen to the words of Allah and the words of the Prophet Wasallam, so that we can change as a society, so that we can change as a nation, so that we can change as an ummah. And the only way if that's going to happen is if each and every one of us make that effort. Each and every one of us has to phone somebody, has to knock on someone's door and say, you know what, there's a class there. It's not bad. Let's go and listen. Let's go and find out more about our religion. And then we'll go out for a bite to eat at Pizza Hut or something. Right? Get people to come. Get people to benefit. May Allah Azawajal benefit you all and give you a huge reward. Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullah khair.